gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars. If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama. Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid. Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit. Trying to learn some game, Xavier, y'all gonna talk about it. No, Deanna, speak that shit that everybody voucher. Ain't no more excuses valid. Get up off the couch and get up in your bag. To your bank account, need an accountant. Yo, 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 what's good, everybody? Welcome back to the greatest show on earth, the Million and Mindsets Podcast. I am your host, Xavier, and today we got a, um we got another special episode, man. But before, but before we get started, I would like to advise all the listeners and watchers to please subscribe, like, rate, leave a comment, share the video, all those things. We would um greatly, greatly appreciate it. And getting right to it, man. We got a special episode. I got a special guest in the building, man. I got a Chicago native. I'm always I'm always happy when I get other Chicago natives in the building, man. Uh Smitty. AKA Smitty to go. He he killing. He going crazy for a minute, man. So he had to get this done. So welcome to the show, bro. What's good? What's going on, my guy? <laughs> What's good, happy man? Finally, I see you finally, shining. Happy finally to be here, man. Yeah, man. I see you shining. You shining. You doing your thing, man. So let's get let's get right to it. So for the people who this may be their first time seeing you, hearing of hearing of you, do you mind just giving a quick like background of yourself? Let them know who you is. Yeah, man. So my name is Kenny Smith. I'm from Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. I recently just moved to Atlanta, though, to get this business stuff going, but, mm -hmm. uh, man, I, I had a crazy last two, three years. Uh, my life was uh, very different from now and then three years ago. Uh, I'm glad I got a hold of this stuff. I did get a hold of it, though. Changed my life. Mm -hmm. And what, and what, and, uh, break that down just for the, just uh, some more insight on it. Like, what you mean, how, like, how, how did it change? What was you at three, four years ago? All right, so I, uh, I think I was, I think I was kind of like, just lost in a in a world of what everybody else was doing, especially in Chicago. So I'm just right. I'm just going around probably just doing anything. You know, uh, I thought I was going to do some basketball stuff, as in some high school, college stuff. Man, but you know, I that like wasn't that. that wasn't going to pay the bills. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> nah, but I was doing um, I was doing little stuff like I was like trying to flip iPhones or I was trying to like uh, resell some shoes or things of that nature. I was trying to work jobs. That wasn't that it. I, I, I left every job that I ever even started. <laughs> like I, I just I just was walking out and uh, or getting fired from them. I remember one time I got fired from a job. I was trying to go play like a basketball game at like a rec or something. And they fired me. I don't even know why I decided to go play basketball. You didn't show work. up, huh? No. Nope. What you was working at? I was working at some warehouse. It was third shift. I ain't gonna lie, I love that job though because we worked third shift and the, and the owners right. wasn't there, <laughs> no supervisor was there, so we was just doing whatever doing we wanted whatever. to do. Uh -huh. That's crazy. But talk, let me ask you this though, because being from Chicago, I already know the um, all the everything that come with that, all the other outside temptations. It's easy to get caught up in some bullshit. So how you even get get to the transition of business and entrepreneurship? Oh uh, yeah, I never, I never got wrapped up into all the crazy nonsense with all the reckless stuff. I was always. Uh, more so in the crib playing a game or playing basketball type of thing. I was never into that crazy stuff. But the journey of me getting into this business stuff was really a friend of mine. So the backstory of how I got into this was a friend of mine named Lamont. Shout out to Lamont. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, my, my brother, man, um, he started the journey first. So what really happened was we was, we, was getting, we was getting a few dollars at first, you know what I mean? And then what we was doing was we was traveling the world. We was uh we was outside, we was we was with the females, buying our clothes and stuff, just just living, doing whatever we wanted to do. But then what happened was he stopped. So it was like a group of us, it's like six, seven of us. We always did our thing all the time, every week or every month, you know what I'm saying? We doing our thing. He went into like a hibernation mode for like six to eight months. It was really it really went into like a couple of years, but like for like a true six to eight months, he started like disappearing from the crowd. It was like no outside. It was like, all right, come on, man. We, we tell him to come outside. Like, nah, I got, I'm, put, I got put in some work, you know. I got put in this stuff, and we like, he ain't going out of town no more. We chilling with the females, chilling over here. Like, come on, man. He, just, he like, nah, man. I gotta go finish this stuff. So we we were confused. Like, man, he bugging, you know what I mean? And um, what he was doing was he was really locking in on, you know, learning. He was getting the information. He was, oh, he got a hold of that information, man. He was stuck. So he was in that, he was in that mode of just like, hey, nah, I got access to some information. I'm locking in on it. I'm learning. So when he got a chance to start learning everything, he started start showing us, like, hey, this is what I've been working on, man. Like, like this is the I'm I'm finna start showing y'all the pieces that I've been putting together for us. So he started coming out with like big credit card approvals. Oh, I got approved for 10,000 yesterday, and 15,000 another day. 
I'm looking like, hold up. Hello, how you doing? <laughs> hey, whatever that is, <laughs> I need to do that right, right there. Right, right, right. So uh, he started coming up. And then he talking, yeah, I'm finna get in this real estate stuff. I'm finna start fixing my credit. I'm gonna give me some property. And we like, man, we ain't, we ain't never really been into all that. How you finna get into all this? Like, how you know? And it was like, it was just a thing that kind of like, kind of went in one yeah, after the other at right. first. Like, the first few conversations, it was like, all right. But me, like, one time he really sat me down and showed me the back end of it. He like, bro, I'm try, I've been trying to tell y'all this is what I've been doing. Y'all need to, like, listen to me a little bit. And I, I really sat down with him for a couple of hours, and he kind of, like, started pouring into everything he'd been learning, everything he'd been putting together, why why we should be doing this, why it makes sense. And I, it clicked with with it clicked with me what, very fast. I'm like, at the first instance, first thing, you getting approved for 15000 in one day. Whatever you're doing, I need to do that. Because yeah, <laughs> I'm not getting no 15000 in one day. So whatever yeah. you're doing, I need to learn that. So that was my first instance. Like, ah, nah, I need to tap into that. But when he set me down, he showed me the back end. Like, all right, look. Got my credit together. This high. That's why I got approved fifteen thousand. That's how I did it. Mm. I'm, I'm looking like, dang, I got a four hundred credit score. I can't even can't do this. Do so now you're like, well, shoot, I learned how to clean it up. I learned how to build it. I learned how to fix it, build it, and go get the money from the banks. I'm like, hold on, teach me this. So he like, man, you know what? I learned this stuff, and everybody keep asking me questions. I'm gonna start teaching it. So I was really in the first group of people who he just yeah, he put on teaching. to it. Yeah, he just put, he like, you know what, my brother, I got you. You know what I mean? He like, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna teach you everything from point A to point Z. Man, he got me. He, I got a hold of that stuff. I went in hibernation for like six to eight months. <laughs> it was over with. <laughs> I went in hibernation for like six to eight months myself. I'm like, I understand what he was doing now. He like, it's a whole nother world, world out here. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, wow, this is the stuff we've been missing. Mm -hmm. This is, this is the, this is the stuff they've been doing on this other side. Like, mm -hmm. I got, I got intrigued. I got very intrigued. Um, uh, I'm intrigued with money, but uh, credit re res reside with it so good because it's money too. Right. You know, you tell about some yeah, so I'm finna end up having two hundred thousand in business credit and credit. I'm like two hundred thousand. Come on, man! Like stop playing with me. Like this ain't real. Like you, are you serious? He's right. like, yeah. He said, you think I'm playing? I just got twenty right there. I'm gonna go get twenty next week. I'm like, come on, that stuff starting to add up quick. You, I said, right. you just gonna get two hundred. I'm mm -hmm. like, he said, I'm gonna show you this stuff. So I learned it. I went into my, I went into my little mode of learning, 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 learning. Then I started seeing some results and some success myself. It was, it was from you know cleaning my own credit. Well, actually, he was helping me. He was helping me clean my own credit. Clean my own credit. When I start cleaning my own credit, now I'm at a 700. And then now I get approved for my first little credit card, 5,000, 3,000, 5,000. I'm all it's lit. Up. It's lit. I said, I said, okay, I like this, though. It's cool. Um, so then he like, well, then we can't just be getting the money and doing stupid stuff with it. We got to buy clothes and go outside and stuff like that. Ain't it. He like, we got to put this stuff in some money where we uh, put this stuff in some places where we can make some make money, money, make some passive income. So I'm like, all right, I get you, but like, what we finna do? I don't know. He like, well, I know I'm doing real estate. So I'm like, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. So the first thing I did was I'm just, now I'm researching every day, all day. I'm not going to sleep. Three, four, five o'clock in the morning, I'm researching where I can put my money, how I can get access to more money, things of that nature. The first thing I came across on YouTube, uh, how to start an ATM machine business. I said, bingo. I'm, <laughs> I'm trying that right there. I said, I'm trying it. Whatever, whatever gonna come with it, I'm gonna try it. So I was like, okay. So I started learning. Okay, I can get the ATM machine. I got this credit card. I'm like, I ain't gonna use my money. He keep telling me to use some other people's money, and I can make money while spending money with these credit cards. So shoes, I'm gonna try that. So I, I literally uh, used one of the methods he told us to take the money off the credit card to go purchase me an ATM machine. Purchase that. So uh, I got to learn a little bit about the ATM game. This is my first little investment, man. My first little investment for me to get the glimpse of I gotta spend some money and start waiting slowly for my oh, money to come back. back. Monthly, right. I'm like, man, I'm spending fifteen hundred, I better make five thousand. Hey, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. thinking that in my yeah. head, but I'm like, know, that right? ain't how this stuff go, man. I'll, I'll probably make two hundred a month. I'm like, all right, that's cool, but it's like I don't know. I was like, all right, I'm gonna just rock with it. So I went and did it. First thing I did was I hit somebody I knew. I'm like, she had a uh, hair salon. So the hair salon was um in Chicago, out west somewhere. I'm like, you know what, I'll do a deal with you. Uh, you can get a percentage of the money if you let me put it in your shop. I said, I got this ATM machine. Just Let's just tell the people, let's just tell the people to pay cash because most people going to like, let me cash at you or let me use my card. Like, nah, let's just tell them like, hey, we only take, cash. only take cash and then let them send them to this ATM machine. Let's try to make some money. I did that. That was my first thing. I started making a little couple of dollars out there. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I like this. And then, um, so I'm back at home researching a little bit. My credit's still building now. Now I'm about to probably go get another little credit card. And I'm on limits. I'm getting, I'm probably getting five, seven thousand. You know, so my next thing was, okay, well, I got to keep doing it. I got to keep trying to build this thing. So uh, I just thought about um, vending, 
vending machines. I'm like, I always wanted to do an ATM machine. I always wanted to do a vending machine. machine. As we were just, I was always looking at these things in these stores. We always been using them for so long, but we never thought to own them. So when I started getting a glimpse off YouTube that I could own them, I'm like, man, I'm going to get a vending machine too. That was my next thing I got. I went and got me a vending machine. I started that. I'm like, bro, this stuff kind of cool. Like, this is some different cool stuff. And I'm going to start making some money. Now, both of these going to start making me some money. So that was my first entry. First, first entry to it. That's how I got into it. And that was my first entry to this business stuff and investing and utilizing my credit and things of that nature. That's crazy, bro. But mm -hmm. I want to say shout outs to Lamont, first of all, because a lot of times people get the information and they hoard it. They're going to be like, man, I ain't telling nobody this shit. I'm eating. I want to be the only one eating. So the fact that he sat down for a minute to get the information is a hell of a feat, number one. But then he took it to his homies after he got the info. That's like, that's a major salute. Because like I said, you put your people on, a lot of people just not doing that. They're going to be like, y'all going to have to figure it out on their own. But salute to you as well for having that open ear. A lot of times when somebody do get the information, especially if it's somebody we know, we feel like, man, you don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? So the fact that you was able to sit, to sit and listen to him and take heed to it and actually make moves, that, that says a lot. So salute to both of y'all. But I want to ask, when, uh, when, specifically with the ATM, so I know people probably here and they like, damn, I probably want to get an ATM. So how do that even work? What do you get an ATM from to start an ATM business? Oh, okay, so they, they, they everywhere, bro. Okay. It's just like anything else when you're searching online. You can go find a vendor who buying them. You know what I mean? Who's selling them. And you go buy them. They probably range from 1500 to like 4000 depending on what type of tier and which one you want. So this is how it works, though. It's cool to, like, figure out the back end of how it works since we yeah, always that's putting, that's our, putting our card in <laughs> taking money out. So let me, let me take out the back end. So the back end works like this. So when we when y'all put y'all cards in an ATM machine, what happens is it's like a transfer. So what happens is that money, the money goes into my bank account, but it's spitting out. You get what I'm saying? But I get charged the fee. So it's like a, it's like a turn and recycle. So it's like as the money is coming out, the, your car right. is transferring right. to my business bank account, right. but I'm also getting the fee of the ATM fee. So I get paid off every person that uses ATM machine for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? So this look three dollars and fifty cent or whatever I set the charge to. Mm -hmm. uh, and a cool thing they do with the ATM machines is they put limits on it. So this is why they always put limits on them. So you like I only can take out a hundred dollars at this ATM machine. I only can take out two hundred dollars. The reason why they do that is because now you, if you wanted five hundred dollars. You gotta hit my ATM machine three times, and I gotta I gotta charge you three times instead of you just getting charged one time. So oh, the, reason when, <laughs> okay. the, reason, the reason when y'all see like I only take two hundred dollars, I'm trying to take six hundred dollars out right now. Nah, I'm I'm putting a limit on here so that if you do want to take six hundred dollars, you gotta hit it three times. I get paid three times off you from one transaction. One transaction. For real, for real. And it's crazy and I like never knew that. Yeah, for sure. So that's that's the back that. end of it, okay. and then um. Another cool thing in like strip clubs. So strip clubs got it crazy. Man, strip fee, ten dollars. Ten dollars. Now you want six hundred dollars out of the strip 30. club. Thirty. And imagine all night, all night, thirty, 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 thirty. Like you, you it, it could get real in a, in a strip club. You got your ATM machine in the strip club. It could get real. It could get real. That shit makes. Hey, uh -huh. I never knew that. I was, man, I'll be going to the ATM all the time. I'll be like, man, what the fuck? Fuck, it's a two hundred dollar limit. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. What kind of shit is this? But that makes sense now. Mm -hmm. strip, strip strip clubs be taxing. They be taxing. I seen one. Uh, I don't remember where I was at. I seen one. They had like a twelve dollar fee or something like yep. that. Yeah, I seen a sixteen dollar fee before. See, I seen, you know and I saying? paid it. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> on the. I'm, oh man, <laughs> they don't the get me. So yeah, I know really... the game. They get me. I'm. I got need the money though. So it's like <laughs> I got it. I got. I got to pay. It. That's funny though. Hey, that's hilarious. So how many um. Like, how long was you just sticking to that at first? Uh, not that long. Okay. Not that long, man. Uh, I got into credit so deep that I started just uh, really put my mind towards that. So then um, I started I started getting out of that kind of quick because I got into credit repair. So I was learning I was learning credit so much that uh, I would start knowing everything about it that it was like people would start asking me for help about it. So it's like, I'm posting it. I'm posting on social media. Hey, y'all, I'm lit. I got 700 credits go. I'm lit, y'all. I got a little five thousand dollar approval. The people on my on my audience and my following, they like, hold on, we that? ain't seen this before. How, how you doing that? I, I, we all got four hundred. They all got five hundred credit scores, six hundred credit scores. They, I'm like, I'm at seven thirties. I'm getting approved. Yeah, it's lit. You know what I'm saying? I'm showing people. I'm showing my process up. I'm showing people. They like, they start asking me questions after credit. They like, man, I got bad credit. I need to get good credit. How you do how it? How you do it? I started getting too many inquiries with it. So I'm like, well. 
And this, if this, if this is what I'm learning, and and then I, I'm seeing I could probably help these people with me knowing how to clean these credit reports. I might as well start a business out of it. Right. So along with what my brother Lamont taught me, and along with me just being so intrigued with credit, I'm like, man, let me start a credit repair business. Then we we knew that we knew the price points on it. Uh, you know, as a charge, people charging five hundred or a thousand dollars per client. Because this is this this is really worth more depending on what you what, what you are gonna do with it on the back end. Uh, you shouldn't be complaining about five hundred thousand dollars. So, I think I started at like four hundred dollars a person. I started a credit repair business. That was my first business. But that that picked up so fast for me. Like that picked up. It, it, I kind of started on just a good foot and, and what, going went up went up quick. Was you just like consultant or what, what, like how was you how was you running it? No, I went right into repairing people's Repair, credit. Oh, repairing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because okay. I, I I think I repaired like two people's credit for free. So if that was my first initial thing, I'm like, all right, y'all, I can, let me see if I can really do really this. Do it. You know what I'm saying? So I learned the game. I learned how to clean it up. Let me see if I can really do this. Let me get two people. Got two people. When I got the two people and I clean theirs up, oh, I said, it's, it's over. It's I can help people. I can do this. You know what I'm saying? Let me start. Let me make this a real business module. I'm uh, creating me a little website, creating mm -hmm. me a little flyer. I'm telling people, it's, I'm, I'll do credit repair now. Now, that picked up fast. I, I'm dropping mm -hmm. my flyer. Uh, um, I'm getting people credit cleaned up. I'm showing results. I'm showing my results. I'm showing my credit score. I'm showing my credit approvals. They like, you know what he's doing. You know he doing. I picked up quick. I'm getting probably five to ten clients a month off the gate. So I'm I'm making five to ten k quick, quick a month. And you was you was you still at the job at this point? You was already no. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm out of there. I'm out of there. I'm in learning mode and, and, and credit mode heavy. Ain't no job. I'm I'm in the lab. I'm in, I'm in a, I'm in my sister's career with my mama career. I'm in the lab. I'm learning, chilling, learning, mm. learning, 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 learning. Mm. Every day, I'm learning. Every day, that stuff got I, I got addicted to the learning aspect of it because it was just so many layers that I yeah. started having to you know find out about. I need to know this next. I need to know this next. But I started doing real good with credit repair. I started doing five ten thousand dollars a month quick. Quick. So that that built my money up. Uh, I started building my capital up on my credit. My credit getting stronger. My credit getting better. Now I'm getting access to more money on the credit side, and I'm getting access to money as in my business. So now now we're on a good foot. Mm. So, uh, uh, took it, took it from there. Let me see what happened next. Uh, started doing credit repair. Um, I started just start researching a whole bunch of different entrepreneurs and what they doing now. Mm, now I start finding it's all finding these new people. people. Oh boy. <laughs> they shouldn't have let me do that. Back. I was in learning mode. I'm hey. like, oh, what this person doing? Okay. He making a million, a million dollars, seven figure business owners, black people. Hold on. <laughs> what they doing? Mm. They, they, uh, they having businesses. They entrepreneurs. They, I said, yeah, this I like. I like this. I love this, man. This this is dope. I'm like, all right, I see it. I see it. Now I'm on the other side where I'm seeing seven figure earners, eight figure earners, and they all black. I'm like, oh man, this 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 this, this it. This is the side I need to be on right here. Hey, that's what's crazy is you giving out if people really paying attention, you giving out so much uh, game right now without even directly saying it. You really giving up the blueprint. Like if you really want to get into some shit, the first thing you gotta do is you gotta sit your ass down to get the information. 100%. After you get information, you go hard. You just be obsessed. Every every successful person I had on the show, I asked them some shit. They it comes down to being obsessed with it. They really in that shit. They ain't no cap, they ain't no fiction. They really do this shit every day. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you start building that network and researching. More people seeing what other people doing. You like, wait, I ain't know I could hit these heights. Mm -hmm. So that's really like you really like breaking down the blueprint for real, for real, bro. And you talking, you did that shit quick too. Nah, I, I, I'm grateful that it happened like that, man. I don't, I don't happen like that for everybody, right? But it did. I ain't gonna. I did start from a good foot and it just kept going up, and up, and up. And up. That's crazy. I, I didn't really have a a decline for a minute. I start, I, I'm, I'm in some situations now. Now I'm starting to, I'm starting to bump some little areas where, yeah. like, hey, you got to make some smart choices. You got to buckle down, mm -hmm. and this shit is, this ain't no, this real. Like, yeah. if you really trying to get to that seven figure mark, that eight figure mark, you gonna have to really put some things in place and really learn, know what you're doing for real. Yeah. You know, uh, but I've been so far, I've been doing real good. Mm, but talk, cause I, I mean, you know, being from Chicago, I know. It's so many distractions. Everything's so fast paced. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people back home feel like they can't get nowhere for real because there's so much shit going on. If, if you want to sit down, you got to have a crazy level of focus in Chicago mm -hmm. to really get on some business and boss up shit because it's so, it's so easy when to go outside and get lit. It's fun for real, especially yeah. summertime. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's that's lit. So talk about how was you able to, to, to remain focused and actually get that information and get the information and push the information without all the distractions mm -hmm. that's around you 
Um, I think it was more to do with, with accountability part- partners. So me and mm. me and my brother Lamont, we used each other as accountability partners. As in, let's let's talk about this shit every day now. Let's get on the phone and let's let's conversate about these seven figure plays, these six figure plays we want to put in place every day, or how we gonna do them, or what we need to learn to put them in place every day. Like we having six hour conversations daily. We like, hey, did you did you did you finish that? What you supposed to have did? Nah, hey, nah, did you finish what you supposed to have did? Hey, nah, I just completed this and this worked. You know what I'm saying? Did what you what you completed that you worked? So we pinging back and forth for for the last two three years now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like that was a strong point of me being able to stay focused in it. Uh, and it was it was a lot of just inner me. It was like just like I know this is the way. Soon as I got a glimpse of what's going on in this business world and with this credit stuff and this business credit stuff, I really. knew, I knew in my it was switching my head. That's like, bing, like this is it. Like I, I, I'm starting to see too much of the same repetitive stories. With, oh uh, yeah, I learned how to you know get this credit stuff together. I learned how to get my mind right to just lock in and learn and then and put the work in and then invest. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm starting to see too many millionaires break it down in this way. This is this is the route. So I just knew I had to lock in. I really just. I just decided, like, hey, this is it. I don't want all the females. Like, I'm cool. Mm-hmm. I, I don't got time for that. I got a daughter. And I wanted to, I, I knew what I was doing. Uh, I was making money going broke. That shit don't feel good, bro. So don't. That, that shit don't feel good. I'm not finna keep doing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I need to figure out what I need to do to not have that happen. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't want to do what I was doing or continue to do the same thing over and over that wasn't getting me to where I needed to be. So... I needed to go the right route, and I felt like that was the right route, so I had to lock in on it. Mm. And uh, the accountability part to make it a lot it easier easy. for you, and I feel like most people, a lot of people need that in the world, too. Mm. Uh, I definitely agree. And wh- what was those um, next steps? Because you said you hit 5 to 10K quick. So where was you at, like, um, social media-wise? Like, at this point, how many followers you got mm. and all that? Because I just seen your whole brand, and mm. over the past year, your shit done went crazy, <laughs> boy. You, you <laughs> took off. So where was you at? At that point. Yeah, so I started out just like everybody else. Everybody crying about, I don't got no followers to right. start. Man, look, I started with 5,000 followers too. So, but what I did, I focused, I focused, <laughs> I focused on that first. I understood that if I can make 5 to 10K with the little audience I do got, if I get in front of a bigger audience, this is going to double, triple because I can just offer my services to more people and they know who I am Damn. and what I got to offer so that right. I can be able to present it to them. So I focused in on that. I went into a learning mode and lock-in mode of just learning how to grow my social media, how to get in front of more people, how could I show, get in front of the people in New Jersey or in Texas. And I'm in Chicago. This little vicinity is too small. Exactly. I got to get bigger. Exactly. So this is my research point is how to grow my following, how to get in front of more people, how to uh, you know just grow this thing and get in front of more people as best way I can. So I just started researching that for like the next three months. I'm finding people who talk about this stuff. That was the first thing. Uh, my first my first run into who I got an a idea of, uh, who changed my life about follow social media and growing it. Uh, Neo Davis. Neo. Mm-hmm. My guy Neo. Mm-hmm. My guy Neo. Uh, from his free information. Uh, his free information on this page, I started just listening to him and following it. I'm implementing it. He said, do this, do this, and the third. I'm like, hold on. I'm, I'm going to try that. It worked. I'm like, all right, cool. He had a book. It was called like seven steps to turn your Instagram into a cash money machine. I'm like, and then it said in the description a little bit like grow your following, grow your audience. I'm like, shit, I'm trying to learn this. It was a thirty five dollar ebook. Mm-hmm. I got that ebook. I followed everything in that ebook from point one, point A to point Z. That was my first glimpse of burst. Uh, so basically, basically what he's telling us is create us a uh, create us a meme of your your per, a personal story of you and your business module and, and kind of like try to throw your offer in there a little bit mm-hmm. in a in a storyline of uh on this meme page so when you do that now you need to get in front of big audiences like big stuff don't we ain't even trying to go to the small stuff we're going directly to the big stuff it's going to take some money to do this right but this is how you're going to grow it so you can't be scared you're going to have to spend some money so he telling me go on world star go on shade room go on hollywood unlock this is going to grow you the quickest because they got these 30 million followers, accounts, yeah. 20 million accounts. So I'm like, this makes sense. If I get put on in front of all these millions hey. of people, they're going to come to my page. Hey. They're, they're going to they're follow me. So I did it. I, I created me a nice meme. The meme it was, it was like young black entrepreneur from Chicago starts his own like ATM and vending machine business. And I got my picture of my ATM and vending machine and I'm in there with my stuff. And 
that was the best post I could have did. They right. ate it. They ate it up. I put that on World Star. I put it on Shade Room. Shade Room wanted four, five thousand. Use my credit card. World Star wanted two, three thousand. Mm, use my credit card. How you want to lock on it like a thousand? Use my credit card. So the, the Chicago, the Chicago going up. They like, hold on, man. He didn't got on World Star. He didn't got on Shade Room. Hold on, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Then I, I got all these, all this traction from um, those pages. It doubled my followers out the gate. So I started off probably five, six thousand followers. I'm at twelve thousand quick. I'm like, oh, it's What's lit. Up? Oh yeah, they let me get <laughs> let me get a little formula. You know, they let me get a little formula to grow my following. But I understand. I'm glad I understood that I had to get in front of you more people front. first to make a lot of more money. More people focus on the business first and try to start the business and start, which is okay. But this is just just me personally and what I when I'm putting out to like. If I get in front of more people when I present this offer, I'm going to make a lot, of, make more a lot money. of money. Easy. It's not even the fact that I'm smarter than somebody, that I'm better than somebody, or I got the best offer more than so a person who's been doing it 10 years. It's just the fact that I have to, I have the ability to offer my offer to more people. So I'm going to make more money regardless of how good you are. You only got 2,000 followers. I got 15,000 followers. Now, if I drop, I got I do credit repair for $1,000, I get 10 people, I make $10,000. You know what I mean? Or I, I get 20 people, I make $20,000. If I didn't have this audience in front of me, I can't do it. So I thought I had to take the initiative. Like, let me grow this thing first. So when I start offering this stuff, I got so many people that so many options. I got I got so many people that a small percentage is gonna still be a lot of people for me to make a lot of money. So I understood that quick, mm -hmm. and I and I I kept going with that. I love that, and I I, I spoke on that um on this on on the show before because I feel like every now and then you'll give entrepreneurs I see online say stuff like you know followers don't. Followers don't matter. Followers don't matter. And I'm I, like, I man, that's a goddamn lot, bro. I'm I go like, back and forth with them. I go back and forth with them. You can't tell <laughs> man, me. Man, you can't. Facts. <laughs> if you got 100,000, 50,000 followers, just the, the number of people, you only need a small percentage of your followers to actually purchase from you where you can make a lot of money. Now, if you only got 1,000, 2,000 followers, you know what I'm saying? How It's going to be hard for you to convert a lot of people mm -hmm. anyway. But if you got a small following, it's really going to be harder. So I always thought like that philosophy is bullshit. The more people you get in front of, the more money you're going to be able to make. Facts. Um, not We all know that, of course, if you have little followers, don't mean you can't make a lot of money. Exactly, exactly. Like, come on, bro. We not, we not slow. But at the same token, I don't care what, who and where, what, how you say it. <laughs> a person A got 1,000 followers and person B got 100,000 followers. I don't care what you say. They're going to make five times more money than they would if they did not have it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So Especially that's if a, they pushing their product like that. What? I don't care who who say what. A person that got 100k followers versus a person that got 1,000 followers is gonna make five to ten thousand dollars more money. He's gonna make if he didn't had that many followers. 100. percent Hey, that's bro. You giving out some game for real. You you talked about how you use your credit to pay for the advertisement. Like that's mm -hmm. going like you ain't even use your own bread to pay for the advertising. They come mm -hmm. back to buy your shit. You could easily pay the, the people back. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Man, y'all y'all better be paying attention, man. But let me ask you this. So at one point, at what point did you realize, all right, it's time for me to get up out of Chicago and head to another city? Uh I realized it was kind of quick. Um I, I knew what was going on in Chicago. I knew that that wasn't my speed to be in that shit anyway, you know, to be in that stuff. Anyway. <laughs> right, right. You good, you good, bro. Uh, but, um so yeah. I knew it wasn't my speed to be in all the the rah rah stuff and all the all the stuff that's going on in Chicago, all the hot stuff. I like I knew that okay so I'm starting to make this money now. I was already in a, in a good area where money whether I was right. making money so I had I had an idea of how this stuff went like how to move the right way but I knew that I'm finna reach some different points. So it's like I don't want to be looking over my shoulder. I don't want to be thinking about if somebody watching me or if I'm outside Man, I got, I gotta be, I gotta, I can't even enjoy myself because I'm looking on my swivel because I'm starting to get a little money yeah, now. Money, yeah. Now, now, and I'm, the audience, yeah, yeah, too. So now people got a few eyes on me a little mm -hmm. bit, and they, and they, they knowing kind of what's about to start transpiring. And then I start, you know, getting into the clothes real hard because I'm, I'm fashion with, I, yeah. I, I, love, I love the clothes, and yeah. stuff, you know. And then it started getting to a point where jewelry started coming in. I'm buying. The Rolexes and chain and jerks. So I'm like, ah, oh, like this. I can't, I can't be in Chicago doing this. And I'm starting by this. I'm, I'm my credit good. I'm finna get a nice car. I can't. I don't want to get the. I'm like, oh That's man. That's a bad recipe. You get right what I'm saying? Up. So it's like I know that I kind of gotta get out of it. Like I don't even want to be having this thing on my brain that. Oh, I gotta watch myself. I gotta worry about what this person is. He looking at me like right. I worry about is they watching me or trying to follow me home. I don't really. I ain't really want to have that notation. So it's like, where could I go? And I'm like, so I'm in business, I'm in entrepreneurship, and I'm diving deep in it real hard with the learning of it. 
best place I've been hearing about my whole life about black mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and business people, where they going? Atlanta. Atlanta you know, yeah. so I just, I just, that was my first thought and the first thing in my head to go to. So I, I looked it up a little bit and I went out there a couple of times. So I'm, I'm, I took a flight. We we in Atlanta, we chilling around, I chill for a couple of days, come back home. I like it, it's all right. Went back again, like, I could. So then I started meeting people online and I'm consistently hearing, oh, we in Atlanta with it, we in Atlanta with it. I'm like, damn, all the entrepreneurs and business people there in Atlanta right. with these with these nice, you know, a nice statue in life right now. I'm like, man, I'm gonna get out there. I'm gonna get in the, in the network of this. I'm gonna get in the midst of these people. I need to meet different people because you ain't meeting the right people in Chicago. You don't meet no seven figure entrepreneur, mm -hmm. business owner, you know, in, in a bar as mm -hmm. in Chicago. You mm -hmm. meeting all the opposite. Yep. You don't you don't see your friends ain't no seven figure earners. And as, uh, I said, I, st I started seeing too many six figure, seven figure earners. We in Atlanta. We we meet up we having events we uh we doing meetups we doing greets we trying to network and uh, you know bounce ideas off of each other i said that's where i need to be at i need to be in that facility right there i literally i really had it in my mind for probably like two months and i pulled it i'm out of here two months, that's I'm, great. I'm pulling i'm pulling the, i'm pulling the plug i'm gone i get it i get i know what i want to do i know what i want to be around and i i believe this is the right environment i need to be in to grow so i, I felt that was the need to do it and i moved to atlanta mm. So yo, for your your best, uh, let me ask you this real quick. So it's a lot of people probably watching that's gonna think like, man, I'm thinking about moving out of my city, but I don't know if it's a good move. Why do you think it's an, uh, a, important for people to to leave their hometown, leave their home city? Uh, their environment is big. It's a, it's a big thing. Um, it's it's easier to be distracted when you at home with your people and your friends, and then you're too comfortable too. You, you you way you way too you too cool you too comfortable it's like you, you I've been I've been doing this for years I've been nah you need to get uncomfortable you need to be out of your element like whew, I gotta I gotta really put in this work because if I don't I'm gonna be out here by myself I mean I'm, saying, I'm about to be out here bad you get what I'm saying so moving out your environment I think it pushes you to 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 actually want to get to the, the next level or push yourself to make sure you're gonna work as hard because you don't want to go either back. Or you don't want to, you know, disappoint yourself as and you can't do something, you know what I mean? And then just your environment. Every time in Chicago, we look up, somebody dead. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like my uh, real close friend of mine who I got my chain made from, uh, his name was Young Official. So we was roommates at the time. Mm -hmm. He got killed, bro. I, my first time experiencing some crazy stuff uh, like that in my life. He got killed at a club. after He, has, he was out of jail for like two months. Uh, he got killed and shot in a club and I was there. And that 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 one right there was probably the most turning point. But I kind of already knew that that's just kind of where I want to go. But like that part is like, come on, man. Like I I don't I don't want to be around this stuff. All I, right. That's, and then I was too close to home. There's somebody I live with. Exactly. And then he getting killed. Like he ain't never coming back. It's like nah, bro. I I don't want to be in this. I'm not saying that it can't happen anywhere else. But like right. this stuff. This stuff is reckless. It's reckless. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So I, I wanted to get out of that as soon as I can. But um, back to your question about. Uh, getting out of your environment. Yeah, I wanted to get out of that type of environment right there. Mm -hmm. Get away from it as far as I can because I'm trying to be successful. I'm trying to make something out of my life. I'm not trying to be and fall in that trap of that hole and that mess of all that stuff, bro. I see the other side. I see what's going on over here. I need to get over there on that side. Don't. I'm not trying to be in the Straight midst up. of that stuff. And yeah. I think you get a clearer mind, too. Like, as in, like, people can't tell you to pull up here. I'm too far. People yeah. can't, oh, I need help moving I can't help you. I got. I'm locked in right now, so I'm too far. You get. Even if I wanted to, I couldn't. Are we finna go here? I, I'm too far. Like that's what was going on. Like we finna go outside. Like should I go ahead. We need help doing this. I'm not there. I, I was locking in though, and mm -hmm. I, I had that pressure on me. I ain't had that. Right. I had that tug of war. People pulling me here and there. I ain't had none of that. It's all. I'm in the crib working. Working. Focus. 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 And it, it, it made it better for me. Mm, that's some that's some um that's some game real real talk. But I want to talk about this too though, cause something I heard you mention multiple times during this conversation is offer. And I also seen you talk about it on your Instagram. You talked about why you need to be able to make multiple offers. You talked about having a a, a, a cheaper product, a more expensive product, then you got your big ticket product. So break that down for the people that's listening on just that whole science and why it's important anyway. Yeah, so I, uh, as, I, as I've been learning, I, I, different tiers of this stuff you got to be learning. Yep. So now I'm getting into how to maximize my thing. How to, how to, if I'm making $20,000 a month, I'll make $40,000 a month. If I'm making $40,000 a month, I'm making eighty. dollars So uh, a, a thing that I learned from one of my mentors, uh, his name is Myra, he, he basically put in my head that uh, your offer, your, your, the offers you make in 
present to people, you know, has to be affordable for everybody. Let's capture the money from everybody, not just one audience, not just one tier of people who can afford this, that, and the third, but let's put offers out there and afford that everybody can afford. So he basically said from the top to the bottom, if you sell a 20, if you don't have a $27 product for sale or a hundred dollars product for sale, and you only got a product or offer that costs $2,000 only, right? You're missing out on a bottom tier bag. You're, yep. miss, you're missing out. There's so many people that, that's, that could have spent money with you, but they can't because they can't afford, they can't afford it. it. So let's, let's create more offers so that we can capture more clientele, even if it's a lower ticket. Because now, if I do offer something for $27, if 100 people go buy that, I made $2,700 more than I wouldn't have made if I didn't have it available because they couldn't afford the high ticket. Yep. And what happens is now what we call it, we call it a value ladder. So this it's called a value ladder with your offers. So people don't people don't initially trust you enough yet to just give you two thousand dollars, which is okay, it's understandable. We you know, but if you give them good valuable things at a lower price that they can afford, even if they could afford the two thousand dollar product, they probably wouldn't tap in yet. If you give them this little piece, it's like having a good piece of chicken. Uh, right. and, you know, it's like having a good piece of chicken at a restaurant. One bite. And I bite it if it's good. Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming back. back. Oh, I want more. So now, what you're really doing is you 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 creating a value letter. As in, if you if you get my lower tier product and you find it valuable, you're gonna cite, you know initially believe that man. What else could I learn? And then now what now what's gonna come about? Oh, my next tier offer. Oh, he got this two hundred dollar mini course or this training for two hundred dollars. Man, I might need to tap into that because shit, this was valuable enough already. I didn't learn this, or I didn't went and got approved for twenty thousand off something he said for twenty seven dollars. What about this two hundred dollar off? I get into that tier. It's the same thing. It's like you're going up the value of my ladders and my offers now that I'm making extra money with, but also uh, um um I'm get I'm getting you into the mode of. When you get to this big thing, it's going to be lit. Like, when you get to this big offer, you know what I mean? You're going to learn a lot of things, and you're going to be able to make a lot of moves. It's going to be valuable. So I want you, I want my clientele to go through my value letter as in lower ticket, medium ticket, higher ticket. Just in case, if you're not ready to invest into the higher ticket, I give you out little things, but make sure you know that I'm giving you valuable things before you invest into me all the way. Mm, bro, you, <laughs> you talking some shit, bro, for real. <laughs> Talk yeah. about this, because I know this is something that uh, people ask a lot, too. They be like, how do I know? What's what to how do I know how to come up with the price or something? You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, and what do you base that on? Like, when you, when you create a product, or you create something that you know you're about to put, you about to make an offer to sell. How do you know it should be valued at this price right here? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I guess it's not, I guess it's not like a, a perfect strategy, right? right. I, I guess it's based off, it's based off the value you're putting in this. And, and the way you want to present your other offers, you know what I mean? Because that's a gem. You know, if if we if we pricing this at this, we we want to have multiple offers, like I said. So if this is priced at this, what's your next tier offer and what's that's going to be? So you you really want to price your price points based off what you're going to charge on the higher tier or the lower tier. You want to make it make sense. You get what I'm saying? So I guess what I choose is too. What I choose too is. Let's let's try to price point our offer or our products that people, if somebody spend a thousand dollars with me, that they can at least make ten thousand dollars out of this. If they if I charge them twenty seven dollars, at least they should be able to make two hundred and seventy dollars plus off this. Let's try to ten x day money that they spent with me, with the value you add in your product. That makes the most sense for people to buy, and that's right. how you're gonna know it's gonna be valuable for real for them to be able yeah. to buy this. If it's gonna ten x what they put make, in, exactly. you know what I'm saying. So uh, and then that makes you actually make more money because uh people are you over delivering you know you're giving more value than what the actual price is and it's like a no-brainer you know what i mean because if i should if you give me ten thousand i give you 100k you will take that all day but people need to think of the same thing with information you know what i mean as you invest into these pieces of information if the value of what you're gonna get on the back end is 10 times what you then you're paying it it's a no-brainer it's time for you to make that initial investment and invest in yourself mm. You talking some shit, bro. Like I, said, I keep saying it, but you give us, you give us some, you give us some valuable game. But I want to go back to um, so I meant to ask this. I forgot to uh, ATMs for a second because I know some, sometimes I'll be forgetting to go over stuff. And I know people gonna be in the comments section like, dang, I want to know how this work goes. Yeah. So, but how did you know when you get an ATM? Like, how do you um actually know where you want to put your ATM ATM at, and how do you actually get it in there? Right. So uh, the, the easiest way I got in was it's the negotiation with the owner of the property or the, the venue, whatever you say. You basically come in here and say, hey, 
I, I purchase the machine, I service the machine, I'm going to take care of everything with the machine, you completely hands off. But being as though it's in your place establishment, I'll give you 10% of the earnings, meaning you hands off, no work involved, right? and you make money. And you make money. That's that's a good deal to any owner. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't see a lot of owners saying, like, no, nah, I don't want to make money and not do nothing. <laughs> right. So you present the offer like that, it's, it's almost like a no-brainer. You get what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. you got to find establishments where you can talk to somebody and be able to present that offer like that. I think that's the easiest injury way to present that offer, as in you're going to be the one in here servicing. If it go wrong, they don't got, they don't got time to fix it. You're going to be in here, you know, exchanging things when it's time to exchange or the money low or the, you got to change the snacks in the vending machine. you doing it, not the owner, you know what I mean? But they still get their they money, you know what I mean? But you still get a place to place your thing, you know what I mean? And then good places for you to get them in is like, like we said, strip clubs, right. bars, mm -hmm. uh, gas stations, of course. Or the, the lowest level entry in that you can probably get in, everybody knows somebody that owns a barber shop or yeah, a hair facts. salon. You can get in easy with them. That was my first entry. But you want to go to the big boys, you got to go to that. You got to go to that strip club. Even though they probably, most of them are already, already got have one. them. Yeah. But we don't never, we never think about it either. So like the, uh, the average human don't never think about all the establishments we go in, all the establishments we go in, establishments we go in, they don't, some of them don't <laughs> be having no ATMs. That's facts. But you never think to like, oh man, I can go purchase me an ATM. Now you might think of it if I put it in your head. Oh, I, they hey, don't think now. You know what I'm saying? You like, shit, they ain't got no ATM. I'll be thinking that now. Oh, they ain't got no ATM here? All right, no. Nah, let me, talk, let me talk, talk to the owner. Let me get the owner number. Let me get the manager number. Chop it up with him to see if I can mm -hmm. put one in here. Let's, let's make it happen. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like that. Let me, when, I like I got a uh, question regarding the credit too. So mm -hmm. let's say somebody listens to this. You ain't got to give away all the juice, of course. Just some, some they could take uh, and just run with it real quick. What's the if somebody feel like they got a, some some fucked up credit right now? What's the quickest thing they could do right now to get their stuff in the right track? Uh, if they got messed up credit, uh, the first thing you got to do is clean it up. So we can't make no moves until everything is clean off that credit report. We can't do no trade line that they be trying to do. We can't be trying to get approvals from business loans and credit cards, things of that nature, until everything negative is removed. So I give people one gem on how they can get things removed because a lot of people got things to remove. So the credit bureau is so corrupt, bro. I hate them. Uh, they, they're real? terrible. They never listen to us or nothing. Um, but they be a, not applying by the law, nothing. But one way how we can get things removed, and it's called we call it factual disputing. So you can look at a credit report and pull your credit report to get all three credit reports. What's going to happen is, it's a law that says you have to you have to report our information 100% correct across all three bureaus. Every piece of information on our credit reports from Experion, TransUnion, Equifax has to be 100% accurate across all three bureaus, or that's a violation of the law. Not 90%. Not 80%, not 98.9% not correct. It has to be 100% correct across all three bureaus. So what I mean by that is this. If I got a, a credit card from Chase, it's a $10,000 limit, right? And it's on Experion, TransUnion, Equifax. If we look on our pieces of information that the date opened, we just look at that section alone, the date this, the date this account was open, right? We're going to look at all three. What's going to happen is, we're going to look at Experion. It's going to say a certain date. So let's just say February 1st, right? The next one we go over, it's going to say like February 10th. And the next one might say like February 10th again. So if the information don't match across all three bureaus, 100% across all three, that's a violation of the law. This is a reason we can use to be able to dispute something off our credit report to remove it. That's why we say it don't matter what you have in your credit report. Even if you owe a million dollars to a company right now, X, if you owe somebody a million dollars, I don't care that you owe them a million dollars. I don't care that they know you owe them a million dollars. None of that. We can get it off your credit report because we're, we're getting it removed based off how it's reported on our credit report, not the fact that if you owe it or not. Mm. It's a law that says it has to be 100% accurate across all three bureaus. So we're attacking this account based off the law. The law. And the federal, this is the federal law say, so can't nobody go against that. So, hey. This date says February 1st, and on this side, it say February 10th. How could this person open one account on two separate, two separate days? days? Impossible. Y'all messed up. Uh, I'm going to draft this up in a letter. Hey, I see that this is inaccurate across all three bureaus. It's a violation of the law. Y'all need to remove this immediately. And then you send that in certified to the British bureaus, and then you, you dispute it that way. Oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> student loans, re, re, repos, I don't, I don't care what it is. If you owe $17 million to the, the car company, 
I ain't say you're not going to owe it in real life. But right, 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 right. credit report, when we're trying to get this 700 score and get this back from these banks, oh, no, this this coming off. You know, it's opposed to So we got we to gotta enforce it, though. You know what I mean? Send our disputes in, and then we got to get to the next level of going to the higher tier if they're not listening. But that's a reason why we can remove an account, and that's why we can get anything off a credit report. And I'm going to tell you one more thing is that it's crazy. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy that – 99.9% of the things on our credit report are wrong. It's just all of us don't look at don't our know. credit reports and don't, and don't look. know. It's crazy. I have not seen one account that was 100% accurate across all three bureaus. Not one. And I have looked at thousands of credit reports by now. Now, one account had all of everything on our credit report 100% accurate across all three bureaus. Not one. So pretty much everybody got something that they, that they can dispute. Everybody, my guy. Even you. Mama, sister, cousin. No, I'm finna go look at my shit. Get to the crib. <laughs> Pull it up. Pull it up right now on the screen. I bet a million dollars that some right now can find inaccurate on your credit report, and that's a reason why we can be able to dispute it. Ooh, hey man, like I said, you 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 give us drive us some shit. So everybody that's listening, y'all better be um definitely paying attention to that man, because this that's that's super valuable. If people know that, that's something that that you might not be realizing, but that's life changing for real, because that could affect your credit score. Now your score score up. Now you go get this bread you're talking about. Now you go bust these plays you've been trying to do, but mm -hmm. you ain't even know this information. So you listening to this right now? Go look at your, <laughs> go check go check your <laughs> shit to make sure everything right and send them to send the disputes in and all that. So that's real, bro. That's yeah. And I just introduced this new system. So my new system uh, is cold, man. Uh, it's my new system is affordable for everybody, so it's free. So I created this new software that is free for everybody, right? Only, only thing you got to do is get your credit report. But in my system, I let you use my system, my dispute letters, and my process of how to clean up people's credit reports. You just got to do it yourself, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But I'm going to give you everything and all the tools you need in the software, everything for free. You just got to get your own credit report. Uh, it's, it's called DIYDisputeFlow.com. Mm -hmm. Once you get in there, you can be able to, uh, you know, put your credit report in there, import it. Uh, it'll automatically draft your negative items for you. So you can see that, and then all you got to do is select the reasons of why you want to get it deleted. I just gave you the reason. Right. How you can get it removed, and then it automatically draft your letter letter for you. So then when it automatically draft your letter, you just print it out, send it into the send it into the bureau, certified, and you on your way to clean up your credit report. Mm. Bro, this 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 one of them ones right here, y'all. Make sure y'all y'all share this shit with somebody that needed, because I know somebody need to hear this. But let's talk, let's talk about this, because I I think um this is dope too, man. I seen you did a um a a, a six figure day. Uh, uh, that's we 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 gotta we we gotta touch on that. So first, yes, the first part is how did you uh make that happen, and then second part is how did it feel when it when you accomplished it. Right. So, yeah, we can get into that. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. So it goes back to when I was talking about growing that audience, bro. It only happened like that because I got so many people in front of me with a certain offer and then how I presented my offer. So I break it down to you on the back end. I, we call it a master class, right? I did a master class to my audience, right? I promoted it for like 10 days. So I'm, I'm basically creating a flyer and I'm saying, hey, are we teaching credit, the credit game and business credit game for an hour on this free master class. I'm offering it for free, right? So I get, I think, 2,000 people to register. You get what I'm saying? Because it's free. They come free. in and get game. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So I only got that big audience because I had a bigger following. Right. If I had a lower following. I cannot do this. So this is what plays a part. Okay, so I got 2,000 people to register for my free master class, right? So we get on the call. The day is here. You get on the call. I got... Maybe it's like 1,500 people really show up. So 500 people don't show up, about 1,500 people show up. So I give them straight game. I, give them, I, don't, I don't give no fluff stuff. I'm giving them actionable steps. I'm giving them stuff they can go do right now. Banks, they can go get approved for twenty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 with how to clean up their credit report, how to even start them a little credit repair business if they wanted to. I'm giving them straight game for an hour. I'm giving them, I'm landing out the, a little blueprint for them. For, I only got an hour with y'all. My blueprint going to take longer than an hour for real, for real. But right. I'm giving them the best, best as I can for an wow. hour. Hours straight, they like, man, this is some amazing different information that I wish I had access to and, and, and that I knew because if I knew it, I could be able to use this stuff to get into with these ideas I've been wanting to do my whole life. So as I'm as I'm presenting it to them and as I'm showing it to them, they like, man, bro, like I want to learn more. I want to like, I want to be a part of the community. I need to learn whatever that stuff you're talking about. I need to learn deeper, step by step. And basically, it was like, well, I have a co I had a coaching program available. So my coaching program was really two thousand at the time. So I was I was I was charging two thousand for my coaching program, but for them on the call, I gave them a tremendous deal. 
and I let them, I let them, say, I, I let them talk me down. They on their tongues. Come on, man, man, you got to look out for the people, and I, you got to look out for we trying, we trying to learn and stuff. So I said, you, you know, so I look out for y'all. I let y'all in my program for a thousand dollars, so nine ninety seven. I had fifteen hundred people on the call. So they in the chat, they're going crazy. They're going crazy. Like, man, come on, Smith, let us in this program. Let us in this program. They're trying to join. So I'm like, all right, I took $1,000 off my program, and I, I let y'all join it right now. You know, whoever want to join, it's up to you. You don't got to join. I, I really came here to get y'all a free game. You don't want to join? I dropped it for them to join. I dropped the link for them to join. So as I'm dropping the link for them to join, one of my team hit me like, like, it's a, like, it's a lot. Like, and I'm like, what you mean? It's a lot. Like, like I ain't think. I really wasn't. I was thinking maybe 10, 15, 20 people come in. All right, that's cool. That's you know cool. what I'm saying? That's cool. You know what I mean? They got their free. All the rest of people, y'all got y'all free stuff. All right, I'm cool. I'm gone. But it started going crazy, crazy, crazy. I'm like, whoa, it's 50 people didn't join within 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, hold on. <laughs> they all tripping. 50 piece. And then, like, six, so throughout the journey, about like 80 people, 85 people joined at my $1,000 price point. So that's why they say you get your offer, you get your product, and you sell it to a certain amount of people, you're gonna make a million dollars. You get what I'm saying? So at this point, it was just a one day. So mm -hmm. I sold a $1,000 product to 100 people. 100 people. But it really was like 85 people. So mm -hmm. I, I probably made 85,000 on that end. But then what I did was, it was like, okay, people was like, I ain't gonna remember this stuff. So what I did was I packaged my class that I did for an hour and a half, and I packaged it, and I said, okay, if you want the replay, I got it for y'all, but it's gonna cost y'all because I gave I gave y'all the game for free. Now y'all want some more from me? Y'all want me to replay all my stuff? Y'all could be listening. Right, let's do it all. All day, right, so day, look, day, I said I, I got y'all though. You know, it's gonna be a little price, so I, I charge like one fifty four. Like, and the people that didn't come too, so I'm like for y'all too. If y'all missed it, oh, I was at work or I had the kids or they couldn't come. It was a lot of people that. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna package this thing up. I'm gonna, um, uh, I got a replay now, and I'm, I'm gonna put it in my bio. You want the replay? Go ahead and do your thing. About six hours later. I don't know how many people bought that. Another 17,000 came through. Looked at my bank stay 102,000 and came. I'm like, oh my God, this the real. I'm like, I was I was shocked. Um, I was jumping out my seat. <laughs> I, was, I was jumping out my seat a little bit because I'm like, I had to think, I had to think a couple, like, is this real, bro? I'm like, nah, bro. I, I, I'm looking at these numbers. I'm like, bro, this is real. <laughs> I just did six figures in the one day. I'm like, it was, it was, it was joyful. It was, it was real cool. It was like, it was real eye opening. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that got my confidence through the roof. Uh, that got my, that got my brain to another tier too. Uh, at first, I was like, man, this stuff possible. But like, after that, I'm like, oh no, anything possible. I, I start thinking about ten million dollar days. I start thinking, <laughs> I start thinking crazy stuff. I'm like. I'm like, this stuff is real if you just know the pieces of information and how to put them together. together. And believe in yourself, and too. Bro, this is, yeah. this is real. Yeah. I'm like, I said, so I really got into uh, just having offers, you know, and being able to sell a product or offer to a certain amount of people. You're going to make a certain amount. It's a numbers game. It You're going to make a certain amount of money. So that's how I have I had sold my programs like 85 people, and mm. then I sold the replay to another certain amount of people. I may have my hundred K day. <laughs> that's man, congrats. That's a big deal, bro. For real. And, uh, I, I like something you said. You you said you got it took your confidence to another level. I think a lot of times people don't realize money, success, and confidence. All that shit is linked for real. The more wins you get, the more money you start making and accumulating, your confidence naturally gonna go up. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Some people think that's some bullshit, but I would like start making money. You are gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you gotta get in it. To, you gotta get it in it to start grasping to, to really understand it, to grasping know? what's going on. For mm -hmm. Yeah, fact. Mm -hmm. and this, this, this. Um, I think this is my final question for you because I feel like you can learn a lot from the wins, but I also believe it's a lot you can learn from the L's or the uh, the mistakes or the regrets too. So my question is, throughout this whole process, the journey, what is your biggest regret? My biggest regret through th through this journey, mm -hmm. uh, I wish I would have paid the people I want to learn from quicker. <laughs> I wish mm. I would have I would have paid the people that I want to learn from quicker because I would have got access and a hold of the information I needed faster. quicker and faster, and I would have had hold of it, and I would have been able to map out what I wanted to do at a quicker rate. Like it would I would have grew my thing, what I got going on, quicker. You know, so in an instance, in the last two years, I I generated a million dollars, as and I just dropped That's on big. my I dropped on my social media. You get what I'm saying? Uh, not too long ago, that I, I looked at my numbers, I generated a million dollars over two years. I feel like I could have generated a million dollars in one year, 
or you know, even lower it quicker than that if I had the pieces of information that I was missing because I was scared to invest in myself into them mm, other I'm mentors yeah, and I other pieces of information. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm talking about they want five thousand, they want ten thousand, they want twenty thousand. Man, I ain't paying that at first until I got until I got a until I got a, a bite of it of me paying my first five thousand. Then that implemented me making six figures. I understood that like, all right, no, I need to, I need to, I need to pay my way into learning what I need to learn because I don't know. I can't I can't do what I don't know. So these people at these higher tiers know what they know. The and I need to get in and know what they know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, so I would I would just say I would literally pay people faster than what I paid them because I was I was slow footing. I'm like, I got my little piece of information, I'm doing good. But like I obviously did good because I got access to the information. Right. Now, if I would have got access to way more information quicker, I would have been able to get to a higher tier quicker. That's game, because a lot of people are afraid to um to pay for real. Yeah, They're like, man, yeah. I can do this shit on my own. Ooh, we. I, I go at it with them. Talking about, they be telling me, I can learn this on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Hey, bro, if you can learn this on YouTube so much, why, why are you talking to me anyway? Why are you conversating <laughs> with me about what you need help with? Or, or should I help? Or what's I should, what should you do with that? Or why you ain't rich? Or why the next person who's been it. watching YouTube ain't, ain't made it to making a six figures or seven figures? So the reason behind it, bro, is it's not it's, it's not that easy. I don't care. I don't care how much YouTube you think you can watch. It's some great information. Don't get me wrong. Facts. It's amazing information on YouTube, but it's too scattered. It's not structured enough exactly. for you. It doesn't give you a direct game plan and blueprint, and you're not going to be able to get to them next tiers that you're looking to get to based off some videos on YouTube. You're going to need some mentoring. You're going to need some coaching. You're yep. going to need some full in-circle blueprints to follow and to actually implement. YouTube is like it's good stuff. It's it's scattered. It's scattered. Yeah. And I I think people don't realize what they're really paying for at the end of the day when you find a mentor or coach or whatever is you paying for convenience. You paying for everything to be at that one spot. Because mm-hmm. so you're gonna go on YouTube, you don't know where to look. You getting something from one dude saying something, another dude might saying, be saying, saying something, something a little else. different. Yeah. So now you confused and you trying different stuff. Now the shit ain't working. So that's what I always say that to people that be like, oh, I could just get this off YouTube. It's like go ahead and see what watch what happen. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna man. be confused as hell. And that's ain't the same. <laughs> And uh, too, I wanted to put people on too. To um, as I as I've been growing, man, I'm starting to just understand this business stuff. I'm starting to understand money, things of that nature. Um, and when I announced that I made this, I made my million dollar mark, and and just in my business, I got I got a lot of praise and a lot of happy and, and a lot of happy people. And I was happy as hell to see that to just get that little glimpse of damn, I really did that. But I gotta be transparent with the people, man. I gotta oh, be yeah. transparent with the people, and I got I gotta say this because this stuff is crazy. That I had to go back and look at it, bro. I I really made a million and spent a million. Mm. It's crazy that I literally, matter of fact, I'm gonna break I'm gonna break this down. To y'all. <laughs> I, I gotta break this down to y'all because I was I'm sick to my stomach, but I, I can talk I, about it. I, I'm sick to my stomach a little bit because it's just it's, it, hearing the sound of me said I didn't made a million dollars and I also dished out probably eight hundred nine hundred thousand is is sick. You know what I mean? No, so I don't know. I'm, I'm, boy, bro, I've been stuck. I'm like, I've been I? there before, bro. I know <laughs> that. Like, I know what? the feeling. <laughs> but that's but that's real on your part, just because a lot of people they would talk about it. But they tell you, they they won't talk about that part though. Yeah, so that's why I, that's yeah, why I wanted to come yeah. in and break it down. Like this stuff ain't all. Yeah. It's it's some it's some it's some steps to this stuff. Like I thought I'd be at a higher tier than been out and made a million dollars, but it's for real. I don't, I'm just getting in. Like mm-hmm. I'm just starting. I'm mm-hmm. just now. Now I'm probably about to. It's about to do. My, it's about to do what it's supposed to do. But well, it's important for you to go through that though, because now you now you know and you finna a hundred x now. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But so let me. I'm gonna break this thing down. Mm-hmm. How I made a million and that went right out the window. Uh, break it down. Not, not even that. So I'm just doing all dumb stuff. But even with the smart stuff, it costs. You know, even mm-hmm. with me trying to grow, it costs. Even trying to learn, it costs. So I'm gonna break this down. I start. So I started my trucking company. Mm-hmm. I, I put 200000 200, into that, uh, as in purchasing two semi-trucks, purchasing two trailers, paying for insurances, paying for permits, paying for looking for drivers. And all, so all in, probably 250000 in trucking. Trucking game, expensive. That's a big expensive boy Expensive as hell. People don't know. Two hundred fifty k. This new deal I just got in Miami. Uh, I, I did a deal with a guy um, in Miami with Airbnbs. So we got a hold of this property. They was uh, they had a deal for us to take on 18 units in Miami for Airbnb. We had to buy them in bulk, though. We had to. It was like just a deal. You got to buy all 18 units right now. Like what you want to do? I'm like, I've been wanting to get an Airbnb. Cool. I say, man, somebody said they go half with me. Let's do it. I pulled a plug. 100k in that. That's yep. 350,000. Right two plays. You get what I'm saying? So then we get into 
Yeah. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna live. I'm a, I'm a flashy person. Right, I yeah, like I'm, looking nice. I no like doing. So now I'm buying jewelry, twenty five, thirty k Rolex watch, twenty thousand dollar chain. I'm buying bracelets for them pinky rings, pinky rings five thousand. I'm in sixty thousand in jewelry. This stuff going out the window. Now I'm looking. Talk about it. So uh, I'm, 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 I'm doing. Uh, I'm taking classes. I'm taking courses. I'm taking mentorships. I'm, I'm learning. I'm doing one on ones with people. I'm, I'm in probably fifty, sixty thousand in mentorships and courses and one on ones from my mentors and learning and personal development. I mean. Uh, we we had four hundred or something, you know, already. Then uh, I went and got my teeth done. I'm spending ten k on that. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm running marketing schemes to grow my following. I'm spending five and seven to eight k here. I didn't spend twenty k in marketing. As I'm telling you, get on these big platforms, it costs. Right. I'm doing uh, I'm doing um, intertwines with these big influencers. That stuff costs. They want three thousand, four thousand. I'm spending twenty, thirty thousand in marketing. Uh, I get into uh, taxes. Oh my oh, god! Oh man! Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> Oh, oh God. man! Yeah. Taxes hit me, eighty k, hundred k. I'm whoo! This the, oh, <laughs> that, oh my God! They really smack me across my head. That's just, I feel like that's just going down a drain. That's, oh my God! Man, you, it was crazy about the taxes. Not to cut you off, the crazy about taxes. You don't think about that until the time comes. Facts. Especially when you first start getting to it, you be like, oh shit, I gotta pay taxes on this shit. Mm-hmm. That thing, you know, you get that tax bill. <sighs> Smack me, and I don't know the tax game. I'm just oh out here God. thinking it's cool, and uh, you an entrepreneur for real. Oh yeah, back end smack. Right. Especially if you're trying to do it the right way, properly. Yeah. So I'm kind of, I'm trying to get properties on the back end. I'm trying to get lines of credit, so I gotta really pay these taxes. So I'm spending that. Now I'm going. I was going on trips. I'm I'm trying to get. I'm trying to rent out the best car in the city. I'm trying to br- big, rent out the biggest mansion and yachts and stuff. We did. I'm having fun. I'm making good money. I'm I'm maneuvering. I'm I'm, I'm having fun because I'm working so hard. You're working hard. I'm working. I'm working. Deserve. My, so I'm, I'm working, I'm working. So I'm like, man, I'm having a little fun here and there, but that stuff costing because I'm trying to live, I'm living my best life. So I spent seventy thousand on that, seventy five thousand on that, clothes and shoes. Oh man, I'm a fashion guy. I'm I'm buying Dior, I'm buying Gucci, Louis, Prada. <laughs> I'm buying every designer ever because it's just just this this it's not even for this this my lifestyle for real. Mm-hmm. This this is really what I like to do. Well, this I'm like not to do with nobody else. I've been hearing a little notation. Oh, he want to be flashy and he's mm-hmm. doing. Bro, this is me. That's you. you know what I mean? This, this is stuff I wanted before I got this stuff, and I got it to where I want, and now I'm getting it, you know, and I work hard for it, so I'm going to spend it out to get what I want. Uh, I'm buy, I want to buy Cartier glasses with diamonds on them. That two, I lost the first pair. I could probably another pair. I'm 15000 in and in there. Uh, I didn't spend 50, 60K on helping my family, you know, as in people, you know. The black tax, as you, they call you it. You know, you get what I'm saying? You just, you can do your due diligence as you, 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 you become in the backbone of the family. You know, people need help. I'm, I'm here, you know, I'm trying to help. So I'm trying to help, but I'm, I'm taking hits, uh, 50, 60,000. I'm totaling this stuff up. I'm, right, I'm, I'm putting the numbers together, 50, 60K for the, over the two years. You know what I mean? When you're talking about food, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I also took seven of my mentees on a jet. Uh, I'm doing 20K there. Uh, I ain't talking about rent. We did, in two years, probably 30, 40,000 in rent. I know it. And when I broke all this stuff down, bro, <laughs> that stuff equaled out that to like hurt your heart. 800, 900,000. I was at first I said, damn, million dollars. I'm like, where is it at? So I had to sit my down and really remember that. I mapped all that stuff out, bro. I literally made a million dollars and almost spent like a million dollars. Man, ah, bro. But look, but I mean? the thing, like, like, but fuck all that, because like I tell people all the time on the show, money come, money goes. And a lot of times people wanna cause it's ups and downs to this shit, especially when you're young. You get to having money. You might go broke, get money back. That's just part of the process. I try to tell people all the time, during that process, you can't never just look at yourself as a fuck up or a failure. Because you learning sure. as you go. For you sure. know what I'm saying? This I ain't nothing. You, gonna, you finna make that back times 10. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. you know you got way more information now. Uh-huh. And you gonna have the information on how to spend it, taxes, all that. So that's just, it was necessary for you to go through that. Because it ain't like you spent it all on some bullshit. You right. was trying to level up. I was trying to and that just come. That just come with it. I took a... I took a damn near, I talked about this on a couple episodes. I took a six figure hell this year. 100,000 100, gone on some, just gone. Ain't no way I'm even getting it back. It was some business shit. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's, that shit just that's what comes with it. It comes with it. That's you what comes with it. Every time I think about it, I'll be mad as hell. Like, I could have just, took a, <laughs> I could have went on a that fucking six month vacation just fucking around. Yeah. Type yeah. Shit. But so that's just, that's just part of the game. But I appreciate you for being, for being transparent though, like I said, because a lot of people gonna get game and value from that. And they, not only that, 
they gonna rock with you even more now because they gonna like, man, this is, ain't just trying to be on no flying stun. Yeah, like he ain't sure. like you know what I'm saying, like because everybody go through it. Mm -hmm. Everybody go. They just through. they don't they don't they don't flourish it and say it to the public. They nah. trying to have this like nah, bro. This stuff to be this is the real business. This is real this is real stuff going on. Mm. Uh, and my last yeah. thing I probably leave people with. Um, I want I've been so my new program, Rich Decisions, I dropped October first. This 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 finna change this finna change the game a little bit. So I'm giving people insight on all my marketing strategies and all my strategies to sell my digital products. So everybody know I got the game on lock with the credit, the business credit and funding, and uh, teaching people how to start their own funding company. Uh, that's gonna be dope too to get people to get what I'm doing is being able to get hundred people, getting able, to, getting getting able to people, dang, getting people to be able to get a hundred k and charging them ten percent and getting ten k payouts from one client, five k payouts for one. 5k payouts with one client that's one big aspect of it but uh i want to teach people the strategies of the digital products these things these things is like none before so i took the we took the initiative about with Shaq. so Shaq, right he uh, oh. he he he, he <laughs> went against the grain with mike and kobe and then with that oh, I'm, I'm gonna charge a hundred dollars for my shoot two hundred dollars for my shoot he, he did a low ticket product yep. and made 400 million dollars off a 29 dollar product so if he can do that with a twenty nine dollar product, if you put that in your business module of you pushing a twenty seven product the right way, you can be able to make six figures off this thing. So I was I I, I didn't been able to grow my audience so well that when I'm dropping my books or a, a, a replay or a course or a mini course, anything that's a digital product that I only got to make make once in my life, but then when I make it once, I get paid, I get paid, I get paid, I get paid for forever off this right. product that I only created one time. So. Uh, I, I, I've been having weeks and months of having a thousand dollars a day for 18 days in a row. You know what I mean? I, I, I didn't did, I didn't did that a couple times. Mm -hmm. Like I, I didn't have five K days, seven K days, eight K days off a of product I created one time and never had to create it never again. Had to create made it money again. off of it for the rest. Like I, I literally can make this stuff. For the rest <laughs> of your life for That's real. a book that I got. I made two years ago. I make money off of it today. If I check my list, I probably made some money off of it within the last three days. I'm sure of it. You get what I'm saying? So I want to put people on to like, I want to push this narrative. Like I want to teach y'all how to be able to take these digital products and scale these things up. Like this is another tier of money that people are missing out because they don't know how to structure it. They don't know how to create it. And with, with my setups with click funnels and up sales and down sales and being able to put people through the value ladder of my products, people start paying more money than what your digital product is because you have more valuable things that they're interested in, especially if you put some valuable things in your low ticket thing. People do the wrong shit. They put the the, the little bogus stuff in the little the little price item. Like, man, I'm only charging twenty seven. I'm gonna put some little stuff in there. Nah, put some cold stuff in there. Put some put some of your best stuff in that twenty seven dollar product and watch they bust through to go pay your two hundred dollar uh -huh. product, your thousand dollar product because they like shoot. Man, this man giving us that thing for twenty seven dollars. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be lit. So I want to be able to teach people how I made six figures off uh, like low ticket digital products. I'm gonna give out my whole blueprint, my whole game to that. My whole blueprint, my whole marketing schemes of my text and automation campaigns and my growing my audiences and uh, being able to leverage other people's audiences to grow my own audience and then uh, create affiliate links with other people to make money off other people's audiences and things of that nature. I'm going to break the whole thing down in my new program I'm dropping in two weeks, uh, Rich Decisions University. Yeah. Hey, man, y'all make sure y'all definitely tap in today. Like, y'all see how much value he just gave within this hour conversation. Y'all can imagine y'all going to tap in to, to this. So definitely, definitely make sure y'all tap in. And but but before we wrap up, bro, I want to say, man, I appreciate you taking the time to come out to the city. Yes, sir. And get this done, man. I'm I'm super glad we was able to get this done. I know people gonna rock with this episode. Have you gave a lot of a lot of good game, man? But before I let you go, I want you to plug in all your stuff where people can find you, follow you, buy products, everything. You plug yeah, we uh we at Instagram. That's my that's my sweet spot. Instagram underscore Smitty the Goat underscore. So S M I T T U I the T H E goat T O A T underscore. I only got one page. Right, you gotta say that. Thousand followers. <laughs> you gotta say that. I got twenty page pages, so make sure you only get the page where I got sixty thousand followers. That's the page you wanna go on. On YouTube, Smitty the Goat. On Twitter, Smitty the Goat. On Facebook, Kenny Smith. But yeah. that's that's it. But say say this too, because by the way, it's gonna be new people that's finding this episode three. Four months from now, you gonna have 100k followers by then. So yeah. just man, y'all gotta make sure y'all go to this is an underscore Smitty the Goat underscore. Yeah, that's the only page you got because this yeah. will be so many of these goddamn fake pages. That are, man, they killing me. They, uh, Instagram need to do something yeah, with that man. They, they killing me. Care, bro. 
Uh, I'm going to get in my text number two. They can uh, tap in with me. Uh, my text number is, you can text the word university to 855-483-0477. Text the word university to 855-483-0477. And then uh, we're going to put you on the waiting list in my new program. And you're going to be on the list for when I drop things or when I give giving game or things of that nature. You will be on the list to just be getting everything. Hey, bro, that's that's game, man. Like once again, I appreciate you coming on. This was super dope, and that's all we got. Yo, it, before we cut it, before I cut it off, y'all can follow me as well on all platforms. Y'all can follow the uh, the Men of Mindsets podcast. I'm a uh, at official Xavier Miller. That's my new page. They didn't they got the they didn't spam my the spams and got me out my old shit. Are you serious? Yeah, bro, I got a whole new page. That's why I'm I know. Out. That's why I seen. I'm like, yeah, yeah. They disabled my shit, bro. Like, oh so, my god, yeah, they disabled. They said they ain't even giving it back. So yeah, they, they said they're not giving it back. Yeah, uh, Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, hit me up. They say they we not giving the page back. Uh, well, I, was about, I was about to say hit up my guy to be getting pages back, but that don't sound like something you get back. That don't sound like something you get back, my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't always, help you. Yes, it is what it is. I ain't even tripping. Yeah, We're sure, going to build sure. it back. But that's all I got for y'all. Appreciate y'all tuning this episode. See you guys next episode. Peace. Gotta get your brain right if you're trying to make a million dollars If you ain't gonna do it for yourself, then do it for your mama Only stay surrounded by them people if you know they solid Elevate your hustle up today to double up your profit Trying to learn some game, every y'all gonna talk about it No Deanna, speak that shit that everybody voucher Ain't no more excuses valid, get up off the couch and get up in your bag To your bank account, need an accountant